I'd like you to join me in welcoming Tony Sieber. Now, the other major, major uh, disruption in transportation is going to come from um, autonomous vehicles, self-driving cars. Um, so Nissan has announced that by 2020, um, they will launch a fully autonomous car worldwide. We're not great drivers. Even when we're not drinking or speaking on the phone or talking to other people, um, we're not great drivers. 1.2 million people die in car accidents every year worldwide. And half of them were not even in a car. Cars are parked 96% of the time. Think about it. Car industry has done such a great job with you people. They get you to pay 40 grand, plus gasoline, plus insurance, plus all the hassle, to use it just 4% of the time. Wow, right? Now, 90% um, of the time they're parked, and free parking is very expensive. <laughs> very expensive. Taxpayers pay at least $20,000 for each free parking you know, curb or off-street parking. $20,000, maybe up to $70,000. There's no such thing as free parking. Um, but it's all gonna change. And how is it gonna change? Think about combining something like Uber with the self-driving car, where you always have a car at your two minutes away. You say, I'm here. I want to go there, right? All we want from car ownership is what? Mobility. We want them to take us from point A to point B anytime at a reasonable cost, right? And self-driving cars, um, so far, it looks like they might be 80 to 90% cheaper on a per mile basis. So if you can go from anywhere to anywhere anytime um, at 90% less money, why would you want to own a car, which is an expensive bookend, in other words, right? So when you do this, it's going to flip the equation. Self-driving cars don't need to park, really. They're going to pick you up, drop you off, and pick somebody else up. Think about it. Which means that cars, instead of being 90% parked, they're going to be 90% used. Even if it's only 80%, what that means is the world is going to have 80% fewer cars. Does that make sense? 80% fewer cars. There's going to be no need to own a car once you combine mobile internet and the cloud and big data and self-driving cars. So I told you that the Zipcar share to own ratio was 15 to 1. Basically, for every user, uh, we take uh, 14 cars off the road. Even if you do five to one, which is a more conservative number, you still take 80% cars off the roads. Done. Okay. 80% par of parking spaces, redundant. We don't need them anymore. We don't need driveways in your homes. We don't need parking. We don't need garage, especially in the downtown area because they're gonna drop you off, pick somebody else, and, and keep going. And if and when they actually need to park to recharge, they can do it somewhere else where it's cheaper for the land and so on and so forth. Um, now, an example of a city doing this, or at least announcing that they're gonna do it, Helsinki, Finland, just announced that they're gonna do exactly what I'm saying. The downtown area uh, is going to be knit together with driverless cars, minibuses, uh, ferry, and this and that. Basically, they're doing the infrastructure so that all of these uh, transportation options, private and public, are going to be linked via software. Basically, they're doing what I showed you, what I've been doing for seven years. Um, but they're going to do it at a city level. And they're going to make car ownership in Helsinki obsolete by 2025. That's only 11 years out. Um, okay, so conclusion. Car as a service, mobility on demand 
is going to change the concept of individual car ownership. Basically, we won't need to own cars anymore. We're gonna have 80% fewer cars on the road, which means the auto industry is gonna be disrupted. I mean, they're gonna have to make uh, only 20% of the cars that they make now. Just two companies could make all the uh, cars that we need, just two companies. Um, and of course, the car insurance industry is gonna be disrupted. 80% um, of highways are gonna be basically redundant, 80% of parking spaces, all of these changes by 2030. 